Hi everyone, it's Reverend Dr. Katie. I hope you're doing well. We had a fantastic question come into the group just yesterday. And that question is, is working with our guides actually worshiping a false idol? So I want to address this question because I think this is really important. And you could even substitute the word guides for angels, is working with crystals, is working with angel cards. You know, you kind of could substitute a bunch of things in there. We're going to stick to guides and maybe talk a little bit about angels uh, just for the purposes of this video. So this is, I think, a really helpful um, thing to explore because so I meet so many people who are terrified of uh, working with guides, of getting to know their angels uh, because of old programming. And there might be a lot of fears there. And one of those fears may be that you're worshiping a false idol. So I'm going to clear this up right away. We don't worship um, guides. We don't worship angels. Worship is really reserved for God alone, like God, the creator alone. When I work with guides and angels, I am working with them as partners. And there are um, a few notches above me in getting to know uh, the direct heart of God. And so I want all of the wisdom and advice that they may be able to give me. Um, many of you may know that like St. Bridget is one of my guides. And it's funny, I'm wearing a necklace, a St. Bridget necklace today. And uh, she's right behind me on this kind of other way, on this tapestry uh, as well. So Bridget is one of my guides. I don't worship her. Um, but I do receive her input and some synchronicities that may come my way uh, through her and through her guidance. So let's back up, uh, kind of go to the 10,000 foot level for just a moment, because this idea that Christians um, can't connect with angels, can't connect with guides is so prevalent. Um, it's a... Um, it's, it's such a basic kind of fear, I think, that many, many Christians have, and you may have grown up with that. And this leaves you really kind of paralyzed because it's like you're curious, you want to connect, but you're not sure how to get started. And then that fear of connecting with angels may mean that you love God less or that you're, you're doing something wrong, that you're worshiping an idol um, or that you're, um, you're tiptoeing into sort of forbidden territory. Um, with this kind of connection. All of that can produce this real feeling of anxiety, of anxiety, of fear. It can be very sort of paralyzing in your spiritual journey because you may even intuitively sense that these beings are all around you, that they're wanting to connect with you, but you are not sure if it's okay for you to connect with them. Um, and that can be, um, it can be so debilitating, I think, on our spiritual journey and having to do with guides specifically, because we usually see guides as um, people, as beings who were once alive on earth and no longer are, but can serve um, to assist us on our spiritual journey. So one of the ways that I describe this in my teaching and with the wonderful, wonderful people that I get to work with is that, you know, when we work with our guides, when we work with our angels, we, hey, we're not worshiping them. If you're interested in that, um, you know, other groups may be around that can help with that. Um, so we're not interested in worshiping and neither do they want to be worshiped. And they're not idols uh, because they are not deities. They, this is not a deity that we are worshiping. Instead, we're all members of the same choir. We are all turned to face God and we are all singing in that direction. So that is the metaphor that I use. Um, we are partners with angels and with guides in, um, in, in the worship of the holy, in creating the best universe that we possibly can. But they have a few more things figured out than we do, you know? So it's, it's kind of good to get their help once in a while. So when you do find your guides, uh, when you do experience them, when you do receive all of their input and assistance in your life, what is some of the magical things that can happen? A lot of really cool things can happen when we're able to do that. We're really able to receive some subtle um, messages from our guides. We're able to experience their presence in some profound ways um, when they're showing up. They kind of give us a little nudge. Uh, my guides are able to kind of, they give me like a little kind of a little elbow bump. Um, like, hey, pay attention right now. This is important. This is significant. Um, they can offer some presence for me in my meditation, in my prayer time, um, kind of co-companions in that time. Now, I'm not worshiping them. I'm in my worship of God and they happen to be present during that time. So having the presence of your guides, of your angels can be a very powerful um, 
step of connection in your journey. It can really help with that awakening process. Um, this is, you know, finding, finding guides, I think, is really powerful because we, are, we know we're not alone. Even we are, when we are profoundly by ourselves, we are not alone. We are so surrounded by loving presences that are also created by God. And so um, thank, you, thank you to the writer who asked the question, you know, is working with our guides worshiping a false idol? Not if we're doing it right. You know, not if we're doing it right. If we do this with integrity, if we really step in away from that place of fear and anxiety into a place of empowerment and kind of wholly paying attention, really paying attention to the sacred spaces around us, um, then we're doing that in a way that feels, um, that feels very safe, that is very safe, and is very high vibration. So we don't want to seek our guides or our angels in sort of moments of um, grasping, but rather in moments of holy receiving, like really opening our, our hands to receive um, all that God has to offer to us in the abundant universe that God has created, which is a pretty amazing thing. So what this is actually one of the things that I help people do. I help people connect with their angels and with their guides um, and do that in a way that provides a lot of biblical, um, biblical study, Bible study, some history, um, help people connect with that deepest part of their spirit team so that they can get to know them and not enter into like any dangerous territory of worship um, or of kind of misconnection or doing it for the wrong reasons, right? So we really want to check our alignment, check our integrity along the way. So if that does interest you, reach out. I can tell you about the different ways that I assist people in doing that. Maybe one of those will be the right call for you. And let's get you connected. Let's get you to get to know your guides and your angels. Okay, everyone, I will talk to you soon.